Hello everyone and welcome back to TechPi Production. So today we'll be reviewing okay. okay, good throw. The Ryzen 9 7950 X3D. Finally got our hands on one and now that we have it, we'd like to test out the differences in performance of the X3D variant against the non-X3D variant. How do they compete? What's the gaming performances difference like? What's the productivity difference? And of course, most importantly, are you getting the most out of your X3D variant of the processor? Let's find out. Now, let's talk about the 7950X3D and on paper and in terms of specification, it's actually quite near to the non-X3D variant of this processor with it having the same 16-core 32-track configuration as well as quite similar clock speed as well with the X3D variant being slightly lower on the clock speed. Now, TDP has seen quite a big change to the X3D variant with it now only having a default TDP of 120 watts. Now the biggest change of the 7950 X3D against the non-X3D variant is the extra cache capacity in this level 3 cache. Now you might heard of some old saying last time from your friends or family members that if your computer is slow, just add more RAM. Well essentially AMD have done just that on their processor itself kind of similar to what they did to the previous 5800X3D last time. So AMD have added 64 megabyte of extra level 3 cache on the 7950X3D. Now compared to system RAM, 64 megabyte might seem quite small, but it's actually quite a lot for processors cache itself. So how this works is that in an AMD processor, there is two CCX chips you can think of it as the processor having two chips and one of them has been given the extra 64 megabyte of cache system memory now this allows it to supposedly perform better in gaming so we shall see if this is true in our benchmark later now before we jump into the benchmark side of things we want to talk a bit on the software side now we don't normally talk about software sites a lot here but this one i think is worth noting as the 7950X3D or all 7000X3D variant of processors are quite sensitive to the chipset installed on their system. Now, we didn't know this at the start and we used the older chipset driver on the processor and the gaming performance was not very good as you see in our benchmark later. So what I'm trying to say is don't be like me lah. Update your chipset driver and your Windows version to get the most out of your processor. And because of that, for our benchmark later, We'll have two different results for the 7950X3D. One with an older chipset driver that shows its performance not as good, and one more with the updated chipset driver showing its true gaming performance. So here is our test configuration. And let's get into it. Well, from the numbers that we can see from these gaming results, it seems like the extra cache did help for a majority of the games. The 7950X3D generally outperforms the non-X3D variant with about 10-20% to faster on most games that we tested that can take advantage of the extra cache. Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Dota 2 being a particular title showing a very big difference in performance between these processors.
Now, we also see that the 7950X3D that uses the older chipset driver's performance is quite similar and in some cases actually worse than even the non-X3D variant of the 7950. Now, this could be likely due to the chipset or the software not knowing how to allocate the proper CC access and the cost with the more Vcash to the game above. Now, we also did some synthetic and productivity benchmark on the 7950X3D to see if the extra cash can actually help with productivity and perhaps score some higher benchmark score. So, here they are. We can see that the 7950X3D performs quite similarly and in most cases actually performs slower than the 7950X non-3D variant. Now, there's a few possibilities here. It could be because the 7950X3D has a lower clock speed overall than the 7950X. And it could be, and I'm just theorizing here, is that because the 7950X has the same CCX cache memory on its processor, it allows for Windows scheduler along with the chipset driver to easily lo allocate which tasks the processors need to do. And with the X3D having a slightly more complex due to the extra cache present in this processor, Windows Scheduler might not be able to take full advantage of the cache on these applications. So, are you guys finally ready to get on board for AM5 now that their X3D variant of processor has been released as well? Or are you guys happy with your own system now? And if you are, tell us what system are they? Comment below and remember to subscribe and give us a like. Goodbye! See you guys next time!